There's just about nothing cuter than when a guinea pig is chewing stuff. I'm trying to get his lips. Look at his little lips and his mouth. Oh, come on. Show us. Oh, you're going to fall. You're backing up too far, you doofus. So do you want me to bring up on the pumpkin ones anyway? Because there's like a little bit I don't. Of I think that those two bags will videoing. work just fine. And I am videoing, yeah. No problemo, Ezra. You can say hello. Ezra's not a fan of the videoing. Apparently, neither is Stanley. He was eating just fine until he got the camera out. All right. Stare down. He loves carrots. What? Where are you going? This is the last of the um, GHU's sugar free barbecue sauce that I have not tried. It's the honey one. Um, I. Don't hold much hope out for it. I think I probably won't like it either, but I am going to be doing ribs today and I'm gonna show you how I do it start to finish. And my part of ribs, I will not put any barbecue sauce on, on, on. I'll just have that to try. But I'm making myself three eggs. I have eaten a piece of bacon. But what I've mostly been working on this morning is my beef jerky, it is so good. Three eggs, four pieces of bacon. So these are hard boiled eggs underneath ice, cooling. And then I've got these four ribs that I'm gonna put some um, rub on and, and marinate throughout the day and then I'll cook them later on today. Keto collagen too. This beef jerky turned out perfectly. Um, and I've had like eight pieces of it. And they're about like this. Well, I have all the pieces have been this big, but it is so tasty, as is my keto collagen. Struggled with the eggs, but I've been craving eggs lately. I think I'm not eating enough of them or something. So I also made, as I showed you, the um, hard boiled eggs because I kind of feel like I need to get more eggs in my life, which terrifies me a little bit taste wise. But I do feel really great when I eat a lot of eggs. I think eggs are key to a healthy keto diet. So make yourself some homemade beef jerky because it is amazing. I love it. And then it only has what you want on it. Okay, so I'm going to um, do the dry rub on the ribs now and then I'm gonna let them sit through the um, day and then I'll cook them tonight. So this is a recipe that I got from, I so we grab that. Um, let me, hold on. Okay, sorry, we had someone come to the door. I got this recipe from All I Day, All Day I Dream About Food, and I slightly modified it to the way I like things. So this is for one rack of ribs. Sorry, this is so shaky. Um, one rack of ribs, and I use baby back ribs, the ones I got at, um, Sprout. So you want a tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon chili powder, one tablespoon paprika, half to one teaspoon garlic powder. I actually do a little less garlic powder because um, the recipe calls for one, but I usually do about half. I don't like things overly garlic, if that is a real word. Um, one teaspoon onion powder, and then on, I, I really am not a fan of oregano, so same thing. The recipe calls for a teaspoon, I use a half or less. Um, one teaspoon black pepper and a fourth teaspoon cayenne. I didn't do that at all. Um, my husband's not a fan of the flavor of cayenne, cayenne, so um, I just usually don't use it in my cooking. Um, sometimes I do if like an ethnic recipe needs it, but um, in this case you don't need to, so you, you decide what you want. So you mix a rub in a bowl and then you rub it all over the ribs front and back. Then I just kind of let mine marinate for a few hours. But for her, she just directly sticks hers in the um, roasting pan and cooks it. So once you do put it in a roasting pan, you um, add a cup of water, cover it with tinfoil, and bake it for 25. She says for one to one and a half hours. I found with my oven, it's more like one and a half to two hours. Plus I have 
I usually do four racks. So um, it's definitely going to be closer to two hours for me with four racks. And you just keep an eye on it and see how it works for you. You want the meat tender. Um, you also want to check it here and there and make sure none of the water evaporates because that will burn the um, uh, ribs. Um, when they're done, you take them out of the roasting pan. You baste them with barbecue sauce if you want. Um, and then you can either grill them or cook them in the oven. I didn't put on here, but it's with a broil um, if you do it in the oven. They'll be on a cookie shoot sheet for about eight minutes, but you gotta watch it because that barbecue sauce burns pretty quickly. So this is how I do it. Um, I'll just kind of slowly go down one more time in case you're writing this down. And then I'm also gonna show you like visually. Okay, so here's my setup. My hard-boiled eggs are still on the thing. Here's the ribs. These are the bins I'm going to put them in. Sorry, Esther, I didn't mean to get in your way. Um, and here's my little spice setup. And yes, I'm watching Tracy, Tennessee Keto Mama, while I do this. Whoops. So here's what it's looking like. So I'll just set this back over here. And measure it out because it's riveting it is simply riveting to watch someone measure out spices especially with such a professional setup okay i wasn't taking into consideration my heights which i'm actually short but okay so i've already done the salt chili powder paprika garlic powder and I'm gonna eat going easy on the garlic powder because I you know it, it can just get overpowering really quickly so I think I'm just gonna do I'm doing this times three so she would have done three teaspoons and I think I'm gonna do one and a half sorry Esther if you trying to sneak past oh wait a second that was a half of a tablespoon okay these are this is a new thing and so I obviously don't know a lot well, all right, there. That probably ended up being about what, what it's normally called for. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, onion powder, one teaspoon. So, let me find that guy. Yes. So I'm gonna do three because I'm doing three. Well, Okay, thanks Leah, I'm videoing, so go do your chores. All right, oregano, so not my favorite. So I might just do like kind of a heaping teaspoon instead of three. I just don't like the flavor of oregano. How about you guys, do you like it? You hate oregano too? Claire hates it too. She is my child. Okay. One teaspoon of black pepper, so I will do three on that. My family likes spicy stuff. So, and my husband likes spice too, but there's just something about the flavor of uh, cayenne that he hates. So, come on, get back on. So that's that. Then I'm gonna mix it up. Mixing together. See? Hmm. Start out with a clean counter so that when you make mistakes like that, you can safely put them back in the bowl. Um, and then I'm just going to rub this all over the ribs. So I got to get that set up going, so I'll show you in a second what it looks like. Okay, so these are not going to fit inside of here without cutting them. Um, so I'll probably, I've got two bins so that I can make sure they all fit in there. Um, so I'm probably going to take off maybe right here or well, maybe about right here. So here you go. Here's my rub. And last time I, not this most recent last time, but the first time I made ribs, 
I got way too much rub. Um, everybody was like, whoa, that's overpowering. So um, I'm going to do a little less. But, um, and last time I did not do enough. So it was kind of weird. It was like, the, fir the very first time was pretty good overall. It was just a little too seasoned. So, um, let's see. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I'm a lot better today than I was yesterday, so that's good. Um, there we go. So you just rub it on both sides. And then, and I kind of do it a little bit on the ends too. And then you're going to, you don't have to stick it in a bin to marinate for a few hours. I just do that. Um, but I think it makes it a little more flavorful. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and then I'll show you when I'm all done. Mr. would you please stop that? Thanks. So your hands end up looking like this. And then I got these guys. They all fit into one bin, so that's lucky for me. And I'm going to close this up and put it in the fridge and it will be in there until probably about maybe three o'clock is when I'll start cooking them. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go clean my guinea pig's cage. She's been yelling. Huh? Were you talking to me? No. Oh. Cool. You are very good at science. <laughs> I hope you got your microscope too, huh? Actually, my microscope's up there. Oh, okay. I hope you guys don't get tired of skinny pig video, but, um, so we cleaned out his cage and I decided not to do the towels because that kind of was really gross. Um, he got them all nasty. So we're going to go, we went back to the pine bedding and we'll just kind of see what happens. He seems actually really happy. He's been running around and making noise. So I think he likes the pine bedding. So I don't know. We'll see. Can you go up there? Your food's up there. Usually after we clean his cage, we give him fresh stuff and food, for, uh, veggies and stuff, and I think he's that's what he's looking for. It's kind of like, where's my stuff? Where I'm right here. I just sold one of the best LPs that you pulled out of the garage when you went digging in my boxes. Oh, good. Yeah, from that. But then the yolk's like, no, yeah. I made the perfect hot boiled eggs. I'm making myself a couple of deviled eggs. So I'll show you. So just mash them up with a fork really well. Then add some mayo in and seasonings. So I added mayo and as you see I've got a couple pieces of bacon. I'm going to put a couple more little broken up pieces in there. Okay, so I put salt and pepper in there, and now I'm going to sprinkle it with a little paprika. Uh-oh, can you open that for me, please? Thanks. Well, that is the perfect deviled egg. Okay, I'm relaxing on this chair and enjoying my lunch, and I'm going to have this. Haven't had deviled eggs in a while, and they are tasty, especially with the bacon. 
So it is a beautiful day. Oh, it's so sunny and beautiful and warm. And so we are going to go on a hike. Um, it's, I don't know, like two. We've done lots of school and such. So we're going on a hike. We're going to go on one tomorrow too. This is super funny. We were going to go to one particular hike, but GPS took us to the back side of it and there was nowhere actually to get out and park and get into the canyony area. So we figured out how to drive around and find it from the right side. Got there and we were, then I realized, oh heck, I gotta get the ribs in the oven. And so we were like, well, let's just really quick go and do our another hike that we usually do that's pretty quick. And then we got here, we're here right now, and no one wants to even get out of the car. So we pretty much took a drive around town and we're going home, putting the ribs in the oven and watching a movie because we finished the, um, it's the never ending story. So like the first part of the book is, um, basically what the first never ending movie is. So we're going to just go watch that and then we'll finish the rest of the book and watch Never Ending Story 2 whenever we finish the rest of the book. So yeah, and no hike. But we are going to go on a hike tomorrow with Tim, so it's fine. I just have not been doing very good with my exercise lately. So. So, this is them after being in the fridge. Like, it looks exactly the same as when I put them in. I'm putting them in our big, gigantic, well-used roasting pan. It looks bad, but it is actually clean. And we wash it out every single time before we use it, even though we also s wash it when it's been used. It gets a double washing before it gets used again. It's basically what I'm trying to say. And then I'm just gonna layer these puppies along here. Um, yeah. That's what I'm gonna try and do. Oh, making a mess. Okay. This guy's really long. It kind of looks like a salmon fillet, actually. So yeah, it was crazy with our hike. I have no idea why GPS was taking it us that way. And I've we've only done that hike twice, and I kept feeling like, gosh, I think this is the wrong way. But um by the time we got to the back side and there was nowhere to park because it was you weren't supposed to, it was like in neighborhoods and stuff. I don't know. I just got so tired. I had the hardest time staying awake while I was driving anyways. It was funny. Ezra was like, Mommy, um, do you want to stop and get like a Pepsi or something? <laughs> so he, he knew I was like exhausted and trying to stay awake. So now I've got them in here. I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to pour in. I'm actually going to probably put in like two or three cups of water, even though the recipe calls for one, but that the recipe is for one rack. So I'll probably actually put two cups in, stick it in the oven at 425. Oh, oh for, after you put the water in, you got to put the tinfoil on, then stick it in the oven at 425. Um, with all these, how many I have, it's probably going to be about, um, two hours is my guess, but I'll be checking them at one hour and then two, I mean one and a half and so forth and just keep an eye on them. And you want to make sure that the water doesn't run out otherwise they will get um, burned. So they have been in there for uh, almost two hours and um, I think they need a little bit more time. So I'm going to do that. So this has um, been in the oven for almost three hours now and it's finally tender the way it should be. I don't know if you can kind of tell. It's pretty tender. So now I'm going to take them out, put them on a cookie sheet, and put a little bit of barbecue sauce on them, and then put them back, back in the oven for like eight minutes. So we got, we got two little ones. Claire and I are going to try this on ours. And then we got these two that we'll put regular barbecue sauce on for everyone else. Stick them in the oven for a little bit. Um, and that is going to be great. And I'm also doing cauliflower mash. Okay, so they're ready to go in the oven. So here they are out of the oven. And 
Um, this is a cauliflower mash, so I just cook the cauliflower till it's really tender, then I put it in a strainer and mush it out with a bowl to get all the liquid out. Then I blended it with a, mic a hand mixer, then I put it in here, and also I added butter, heavy whipping cream, and salt and pepper. Here we go. Ribs, lots of cauliflower mash. Um, and I actually don't mind this honey um, GH2's barbecue sauce. It's okay. I just put a tiny bit on. Um, I definitely put, well, there's maybe a tablespoon or so that I put on there because I didn't, I didn't want too much. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be really good. I already tasted the cauliflower mash and it was amazing. Um, let's see. Okay, so here, look at that. Super tender, super amazing. Mmm, yep, very, very, very good. Well, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. This is the end of the day. I'm not gonna be eating anything else. I don't even think I'll be able to finish those ribs um, because it's a lot of meat. And I don't feel that hungry, but I will definitely finish the cauliflower mash because it tastes good and I haven't had it in a long time. So I hope you had an excellent day and I will check in with you tomorrow.